Hello, this is Mr. McGovern. This is the fourth video in the AC Electricity where we are looking at RC circuits. We'll explain what they are um, with a little simulation and then we'll go into this um, model called a phasor diagram to help us um, deal with these situations. So we had um, back before we went to AC and we we're just looking at a DC circuit. We've had our circuit set up with a capacitor and a light bulb, which is our resistor. And in that circuit, from the ones we've looked at before, um, we could measure the current. And when we turn this guy on, we'll see that the current varies over time. All right. Now this is with a just a DC circuit, so the current's going in one direction, but it varies over time because as the capacitor gets more and more charged, it makes it harder and harder for current to flow, because as it gets more and more electrons on those plates on one of the plates. It's harder and harder to squeeze more electrons on the plate. Now we take this concept and we look at it over an AC circuit. So now instead of our um, DC battery, we've now got an AC supply, which is going to drive it back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And for the same reason, as we drive it one way and build up electrons, it's going to be harder and harder for electrons to build up. And so you get sort of a varying um, voltage over here and varying voltage over the light bulb. So we'll turn it on. Electrons go back and forth and back and forth. And as they go back and forth, we charge up one side of the capacitor and then charge up the other side of the capacitor. One side of the capacitor and the other side of the capacitor. And that capacitor, in response with the um, AC supply, we get the light bulb. Now we can measure the voltage so we can actually get a more accurate um, indication of what's going on. And we see as the light goes brighter, the voltage goes positive and negative and positive and negative. And those peaks correspond to our uh, brightness. We can do this on the capacitor as well, and we can get positives and negatives. And those peaks um, correspond to it being its most charged and its least charged. Now just carefully look, compare these two, they're sort of the same shape, but they're not in phase. So when the um, light bulb or the resistor gets to the peak, this guy's not at a peak. It takes them a bit longer. But you can see it gets to the bottom, and then this guy's only just getting to the bottom as well. So I would say in that case, the um, capacitor is lagging, it's phases behind um, the light bulb. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring in a um, current meter and see what happens in the current, see what the electrons are doing when they're going back and forth and see where that lines up. And you'll see that the current lines up exactly with the light bulb's voltage, so the resistor's voltage. Okay, so that's an important um, point. So from all of that, we saw that I can that the voltage over the resistor and the capacitor are out of phase. Okay, as this one's already got to its bottom and coming up to the middle, this one's only just getting to the bottom. They're out of phase by 90 degrees. So that's a quarter of a wave. Okay, so um, here's this is a full wave here. It starts in the middle, gets to the top, goes down to the bottom, back to the middle. Um, whereas this one is going from bottom to top to bottom. Right, so it needs to go another quarter of a wave to get to this point here to be at where this one was starting. So they are out of phase by a quarter of a wave and a quarter of 360 degrees, which is a full cycle, is 90 degrees. The capacitor lags, the capacitor is behind by that 90 degrees, behind the resistor's voltage, um, and the current lines up beautifully with the voltage over the, re the resistor. So all of these situations put together helps us to come up with the model to help describe, um, we're going to use to describe RC circuits. So we're going to use this thing called phases. Now, we've got a complicated situation here, which is something that varies over time, and it's a sinusoid or sine wave varying over time. But there is a simplification we can make, and that is that we can project um, the height of this onto a circle, and something going around steady speed and circular motion exactly matches um, the amplitude of, of our um, sine wave. All right? And you'll look at these two here are out of phase, like these waves don't line up with each other, and you can see how much they're out of phase here. So assuming everything's going around anti-clockwise, um, it looks like it's almost quarter of a wave. And even if I start and stop and, and go around a little bit longer, 
you can see it's still the screen one's a quarter of way of ahead okay so this is our phaser model it is a, something going around a circle just seems a bit easier to deal with than something um, following a sine wave but they're equivalent and this is what this um, animation showing so we could have to deal with these circles like they are in this picture that rotate that seems really difficult um, but all we care about is the relationship between this green one and the brown one we care that these ones are basically 90 degrees apart and it doesn't matter where we rotate to they're still 90 degrees apart so we're just going to draw these statically as opposed to drawing them and thinking about them rotating we're going to draw them once no they rotate but don't have to deal with them rotating so what does that look like so the convention is that we've got our circle here you draw the voltage over the resistor out to the right and you imagine it's rotating anti-clockwise so remember this is a model or a simplification of instead of having to draw a sine wave the voltage over the capacitor lagged this by 90 degrees so what does that look like on a circle it looks like this okay so these are simplifications of the rotating circles you saw before which were simplifications of our sine waves and this is much easier to deal with just drawing some arrows at 90 degrees to each other and not having to worry about them rotating because this is all we care about the fact that these are this out of phase uh, and we can do a whole bunch of maths on them so if we wanted to with these two we could find the total because they're vectors and they're 90 degrees out of phase you can't just add them like 2 plus 2 equals 4 you've got to add them in terms of vectors <clears throat> so the way we do it is uh, we move our uh, capacitor voltage so it's um, the arrows added um, head to tail as we would with any other um, vector addition and then the overall total is from the start of one to the end of the other and so that would be where the supply is so if we had values for this we could work out the supply voltage using this red method here using um, Pythagoras we're going to do this in the exam question later on so in summary this is this is a new concept um, but it's a simplification we have in an AC circuit the voltage vary over C and R differently right and when I say differently they're both sine waves but they're out of phase with each other so when we get peak voltage on the light bulb we don't get peak voltage on the capacitor a simplification to deal with this and draw this and do maths with this is these phasor diagrams these static phasor diagrams even though they are modeled on something that rotates around a circle because something going around a circle is the same as um, something varying sinusoidally we can just draw them as a static diagram and the convention is resistor always out to the side uh, capacitor always down because they are 90 degrees apart